असलकुम दिस इज़ ए काम अंसारी आई एम बैक अगेन विथ येट अनदर वीडियो लेक्चर ऑफ एडवांस वेब डिजाइनिंग स्टूडेंट इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द न्यू टॉपिक और वी कैन से अ न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट चैप्टर बट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द न्यू थिंग ओके इनिशली वी हैव लर्न एच टी एम एल फाइव वी हैव सीन डिफरेंट एप्लीकेशन यूजेस एंड इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ एच टी एम एल फाइव how html5 applies how html5 is different from its earlier versions now we are going to learn a new technology or new web designing tool that is css okay i think you might have heard word css css is a language or if i say css is a not a language but css is a tool okay css is not a fully language but css is a tool which is used to design or create web pages or websites so the purpose of html and purpose of css is same okay because css is used for designing web pages or website in the same way html is also used to design web pages okay so what is the difference between html and css why css introduced because we have html so the thing is that by using html you have less tool or you have limited tool to design your web page in some cases as we know today is a era of technology we have millions of website on a web server so why the people or why the user is going to use your website so to fulfill the user requirement or to create your website very attractive so the user can access any time in that case you have to design a very attractive a very beautiful website so css is a tool which is which provide different different thing to design your web page in a very attractive manner but the one thing is css is support to html okay student what is mean by css css is a cascading style sheet which applies on html means css and html both work together okay you never see only css is working in a particular website okay css and html both work together and make a website very good very attractive and very beautiful okay so css and html work together and create a beautiful website or web pages so as a css is a different language or css is a different tool but it helps html pages or html elements to to give a good look or a beautiful look your web designing so like html we have in html we have different thing we have already learned in html we have all the thing in the form of elements or html tags okay so these tags have certain attributes we have seen and these attribute have certain values in the same way in the same way css is a consist of different selector okay selector and html tag in html tag tags are called as element or tag in css these tags are called as html selectors okay in the same way in html if you want to provide additional information we have to use attributes but these attributes in css is called as a properties okay in the same way in html we have something called values means by attributes value for example if i say the mobile is for example just assume mobile is an html element so in mobile is a html element so what are the their additional information mean the name the name of mobile the brand the brand of mobile the price of mobile these are additional information these are considered as a attribute okay so what is the value of that particular attribute if i say price for example price equal to 15000 so what is 15000 15000 is a value of that price attribute in the same way if i say brand name 
for example brand name is a apple or iphone so what is iphone here iphone is a value of that particular brand name okay in the same way if i am talking about css css have selector which is equal to html elements and we have property which is equals to attribute and we have value which is equal to value inside html so if we are going to use css we have to apply css on html sometimes css is also called as rules okay sometimes css is also called as a rules means css is a set of rules which is used to apply on html so the html page can look uh, in a better way okay so we can customize we can use css to design our html page okay so we will see what is the syntax what is the structure because we know every language or every every tools have their own syntax what is mean as syntax is a set of rules and regulation or grammar for example in english language if you are going to learn english language there is a grammar there is a rules and regulation in english language in the same way if you are going to learn spanish language arabic language so every language have their own grammar own syntax okay in the same way first we have learned html so in html we have seen what are the html tags what are the attributes what are the what are the values and how these attributes value and html tags are designed or written what is the format how we have opening and closing tag so these are the some set of rules and regulation given by the html or the founder of html in the same way css is a different tool or different language which is used to design a web page but is a different so again css have their own set of rules and regulation how these rules and regulation applies on html pages so we will see how we are going to change the style the look and design of html page by using css how we apply we will see okay so first we will see what is css as i have given some explanation some little introduction about css but let's have some look on what is css all about i just want to click on next see just read out css was first proposed by hacken vm lai on october 10 1994 okay so the person who is who is the founder of css the name is hacken vm lai and what is the date and what is the date and year that is 10th october 1994 in your examination there might be a question like who is the founder of css because css is a different language in second line i have just mentioned at the time lai was working with tim berners lee why i have added this because i just want to refresh you that tim berner lee is a person who has, who is the also founder of w3c that is world wide web what is world wide web consortium that is www. com so what www w3c world wide web consortium is a organization which deals in internet standard or website standard all all, all the things are organized or governed by w3c so who is the founder member of w3c is a tim berners lee and one more important thing regarding tim berners lee tim berners lee is also founder of html language so the person who created css is a hackon vm lai which is working with tim berners lee in an organization called c e r n which is situated in switzerland okay c e r n is a name of organization okay which is in, situated in switzerland so the both the both person working in the same company the first one created that is hackon vm lai created css and tim berners lee created html and is also a founder member of w3c that is world wide web consortium okay now 
see what is the full form in again most of the time in your examination you might see the question what is css stands for so the what is mean by css that is cascading style sheet sometimes it's also called it a style sheet why because in css in css file or in css page you will get a different types of style or the rule to apply on html means how the page will look like all the design all the rules all the style you have to mention inside the css so that style that rule will be applied on html pages that's why css is called as a style sheet okay next we have css is a language that describe the style of an html page again i am saying just student listen css is not a not a we can say independent language you can say css is not a independent language or you css is work with html alone css is nothing alone css is nothing css is used to apply some effect some style on html pages that's why i am calling css and html working at the same time you 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 never seen any website in which only css is only css is available but if we have css means we have html page because css is a language or css is a tool which applies on html pages okay see the next line css describe how html element should be displayed okay as i am telling you that css is a set of rules which applies on html elements how the html tag or how html elements look like means what we can color the the different html tags we can design images we can design web pages so by using css we can change the look and feel of that particular html tags effect again just see css is a set of rules applies on we have seen this okay so by using css we can we can set the rules how the html tag will look like we can decide we can describe inside the css now the next part css can be categorized on the basis of how it applies on pages this is i am talking about regarding types of css okay we don't have any type of css but css is categorized on the basis of how it applies on html page we have three ways to apply css on html page for example we have one page for example we have a.html or we have home.html or any name of that particular page so if i am going to apply some css on that particular page so we have three way to apply css on that page okay so i just want to tell you a little bit about that then once we start css officially then then we will learn how it's apply why why we have three categories so i just want to mention you the name of category how the css can be applied on your html so we have three i am again saying we don't have any type okay we don't have any type for css but we have three different ways to apply so on the basis of how css is applied on html we have three types or we have three categories okay so the first way the first way to apply css is inline style sheet or inline css okay the first way is inline what is mean by inline if we are going to add css that is css rule css style on your html page inside the html tag i am using inside the html tag like in html tag we add additional information by using its attribute and we we have to add attribute inside the opening tag of that particular html tag for example i want to change the background color of the page so in html i will move to i will directly move to body body tag and inside body tag i will just add background equals to and inside that i will put some values so here i am using attribute so if you are going to use 
इनलाइन सी एस एस और इन इनलाइन सी एस एस वी हैव टू यूज स्टाइल एज एन एट्रीब्यूट इन साइड एच टी एम एल टैग आई विल शो यू लाइव डोंट वेरी ओनली द थिंग इज टू रिमेंबर दैट इज इन इनलाइन स्टाइल शीट यू हैव टू राइट स्टाइल एज एन एट्रीब्यूट इन एच टी एम एल टैग ओके सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चेंज द लुक लाइक or the feel of that particular html tag so directly just move to opening tag of that particular html tag and use a style as an attribute and provide the the next thing that is property and value because in css we have three thing one is selector one is at one is property and one is value so if you are going to use inline style sheet you have to use style as an attribute then inside double and comma you have to put properties and values we will see how to put properties and value or how to use css what are the rules and regulation but the only thing is that we can apply or we can use css in three ways the first way is inline in inline css we directly put style as an attribute in any html tag which we want to use some effect the second the second way i am not saying second type the second way to apply css on your web page is you can apply by using style as an html tag okay so the first way is you have to use style as an attribute and we have to use inside the html tag but the second way is we have to use style as an html tag this html that is style tag we have to put on head section of the page means what is a head section so our page will start our html page will start from html section that is opening html tag after that html we have to have head tag then inside head tag we can put title tag then we have closing head tag so between html between head tag opening and head tag closing sorry between head tag opening and head tag closing we have to put style tag opening and style tag closing style tag is a pair tag okay style tag is a pair tag if i say pair tag means it's have opening tag as well as closing tag so style tag we have to put on head section means we have to put inside the head tag of html in that particular style tag means between opening and closing style tag which is which is present in head section we have to mention all the set or all the rules and regulation means in first in first type in first way we can simply add on one tag two tag on a special tag only okay so in inline style sheet we can describe css into that particular tag only but if you want to apply css to the whole page okay if you want to apply css to the whole page or any tag of the page just try to listen just try to understand what i am saying if you want to apply css on whole page or any tag of the page you can apply by using internal css that is we have to put style style tag in the head section means you know between opening and closing head tag we have to use opening style tag and closing style tag between these opening and closing we have we can take any any tag which is present in the page and we can apply the css rule or css style or css features whatever so the first way we have seen we can apply css inline that means we can apply inside the that particular tag but in in the in the broader way we can say if you want to apply css on your whole page or any tag of the page you can put style tag between opening head and closing head and then in that opening and closing you have to mention style opening and closing and between style opening tag and closing and closing style tag you have to put some rules and regulation or you have to decide the 
decide the coding or you have to write the what style you are going to put on in which HTML element okay or selector which is in CSS we call it as a selector the third way the third way of CSS is external CSS or external style sheet in the importance of external style sheet is we have to create CSS file in a different file okay just student please try to understand in external CSS we have three ways I, I am just going to repeat and repeat and repeat because we have only three types and these types are on the basis of how CSS is applies on page the first way we can directly put inside the HTML tag the second way we have to put in head section by using style as a tag and the third way is we have to create a separate file other than HTML5 means our HTML5 is different and our CSS file is different for example our HTML5 is a.html so the our other file that is CSS file will be any name but if we are going to create CSS file or external CSS file in that case the extension will be .css because if you are using CSS in inline or CSS in internal you can save your page by using .html extension because it is your HTML page but you are going to add CSS by using two ways one is inline means you are adding your style you are adding, you are adding CSS in that particular tag or we have second way that means we have internal we are using style tag inside the head tag but the both both the thing are working in the same page that's why this page is called as a HTML page but you are applying CSS by using two ways one is inline and one is internal so the extension of this page will be dot HTML because it's a HTML page but in case of external CSS means we are going to create a separate CSS file okay so in that case we don't need to write HTML tag and all these things because HTML tags are written inside the HTML file but in CSS file we have to define only the rules and regulation the properties the values and the selectors all these things means the only thing which is related to CSS okay the only thing which is related to CSS we have to write inside the, that particular external CSS then we have to create this CSS externally and we have to save it by using extension dot CSS okay so HTML file are saved by using dot HTML but if you are going to create external CSS in that case you have to save with extension dot CSS then we have two different thing okay one is HTML file which is full of HTML elements and attributes and value whatever okay so we have full of only HTML then we have a then we have one more file which is CSS file which is which have the sets different rules and regulation or different set set or different full of attribute full of properties and value which properties and value you are going to apply on your HTML page so the thing is that we have to connect these two pages okay so we have a HTML file and we have separate CSS file in HTML file we have only content of HTML but in CSS file we have only content related to CSS rules and regulation now the thing is that we have to connect these these CSS and HTML so the way we are going to connect is different means we have to connect by using one special tag okay we have to use one special tag inside the head tag that tag will describe the name of the external CSS file 
and type of external CSS file. Okay, means we have to write a tag inside the head section, means in between opening head and closing head tag of your HTML page, you have to mention one tag, the name of that tag, which connect your HTML file to your CSS file is link tag. Okay. The name of tag which connect your HTML file to your CSS file is a link tag. Okay. I will show you. I will show you once we start our CSS. So the thing is that we have to connect by using link tag and in link tag is again a HTML tag which have different attribute. So basically link tag have three attributes. Okay. Link tag have three attribute. I just want to tell you the first one or as we know, we don't have any sequence of attribute. We can use attribute in any, any sequence. So the first attribute or the, at, the attribute of link link tag is L R E L. Okay, what is R E L? R E L is an attribute of link tag, which means relationship. What does it mean by R E L? R E L means relationship. Means this attribute is used to define what type of relation you have with other file. Okay, so the value of this R E L is fixed or compulsory. Okay, so inside the REL attribute of link tag, we have to write a style sheet. And we don't have any space between a style and sheet. A style sheet is a single word if I am using as a value of REL attribute of link tag. Okay, the first first attribute of link tag, we have seen what is REL. The second attribute of link tag is type. Okay, type. What type of file you are going to attach with this link tag? You have to mention. So again, the value is fixed because we are going to add CSS. So you have to write text slash CSS. Okay, so the value of type attribute is text slash CSS. The last attribute of link tag, which is very important. Okay. That is href. What is href? Most of the time we use href to link or to connect different HTML pages. Okay. So in the same way, inside href attribute, we have to mention the address and name of that particular CSS file, which we are going to connect. Okay, like if you are going to connect any HTML page, you have to use href. So inside href, you have to mention the full location or full path of that particular page. In the same way, you are going to connect one CSS page. So inside href, you have to mention the full address with their name in href attribute. So the student, I, I just want to refresh you. I just want to recall you that we have three types, <coughs> sorry, we have three, three types of CSS, but, but these types are categorized on the basis of how it applies on your page. We have three ways of how we apply our CSS on HTML page. The first way is inline in which we add inside the tag. The second way is internal means we have to apply on our page and we have to use style as a as an tag. And the third way is we have we, we don't have to use style attribute or style tag. Just simply we have to write all the all the rules and regulation in a different file and we have to save it with the with the extension dot CSS. Many of the time in your final examination, you might get one question or most of the time you get that question that what is a what is a file extension of CSS file? 
okay what is the extension of css file so the answer could be dot css okay let's move now see the syntax of css what is the syntax syntax means your set of rules and the regulation or grammar of that particular language in html we use html tag opening and closing inside the in opening html tag we put all the attributes okay and values but in css we have this we have two example first we will i will show you what is mean by that see here c p we have p then we have opening curly bracket we have i just want to name all these thing then i will explain what is the purpose what is the use okay so we have p we have opening we have closing then we have color we have red we have colon we have semicolon okay so i just so i have just told you the name of this alphabet now see what is mean inside the css what is a p like in html p as i told you css is used to apply some effect on html page css alone will not work or css is not created only for their own purpose css is created only to give effect to html page okay so alone css is nothing but css can provide a good look to your html page okay make it clear so what is p in html if i say what is p so you will say sir p is a tag so we have a p tag in html which mean paragraph if you are going to create a paragraph in that case you will use p tag so the same paragraph tag the same p tag is called as the p tag is same but in css the same p tag or p element or paragraph element is called as a selector okay so in css that p tag become a selector okay so the first thing the first thing is called as a selector again we have different types of selectors and again we have different ways how to write different selector but the thing is that the first thing which is called as a p or the before curly bracket the things are the selectors okay in general these selectors are called as html tag in html okay so if i if you write p tag if you see the in second example you see h1 tag or sometime you will see h2 tag sometime you will see b tag sometime you see a tag sometime you will see img tag so these are the some selectors in css but again these are the tags in html so right now p is a tag in html but p is working as a selector because css is a different tool so it's have different set of rules and regulation so in css p tag or is called as a selector okay what is mean by selector i am i am telling again again selector 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 means we are going to apply we are going to apply some rules and regulation some effect to one selected one selected tag of html so that selected tag is p tag means we have selected p tag to apply some rules or to apply some properties and value or to apply some effect okay that's why p is called as a selector so we have selected this one we have selected this one to apply this rules and regulation okay because css is a different language css is a different tool so we have to give effect to html page but html tag is a full of 
एस्टिमल एलिमेंट्स एस्टिमल टेग ओके सो ऑन विच टेग यू हैव टू अप्लाई ऑन विच टेग यू हैव टू अप्लाई इफेक्ट यू आर गोइंग टू अप्लाई सम इफेक्ट ऑन एच टी एम एल बट ऑन विच टेग वी हैव अ डिफरेंट वे इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अप्लाई इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अप्लाई द इफेक्ट ऑन द होल पेज ओके द इफेक्ट ऑन द होल पेज means you are not going to select any html tag means the effect will be on whole page for example if you are going to apply the text color or the body background color of the page so instead of p directly put asterisk symbol that is star symbol what is mean by star or asterisk star or asterisk means all so the effect will be on all but you have selected different html tag which is present because in your html page there must be h1 tag h2 tag there must be p tag there must be i tag b tag u tag different tag you may have in your html tag but you have to select any tag or some tag from that particular page to provide some additional effect so we have selected so here p is called as a selector where you, you have to apply some proper some effect and that effect it provided in the form of property and value so the first thing is that the first character of this line is called as a selector or whatever written here is called as a selector then we have opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket like like in html we have to put attribute and and equals to followed by values means first we have to write the attribute then followed by equal to symbol then values okay again if you want to add one more attribute again you will assign one space again you put some attribute then equal to sign and value in the same way the first thing is you have to write opening curly brackets and closing curly bracket in that opening and closing curly bracket you can put multiple property and value combination there is only one combination see we have only one combination that is color combined with red what is color here color here is a property like in html we have this property is name as attribute so instead of colon in html we have equal to symbol but in css we our property and value is separated with colon symbol in your examination you might get question many time we we saw the question that how property and value separated in css okay so we have a, we have property that is a color is a property and red is a value so the property and value is separated by using colon attribute sorry colon value sorry colon symbol okay so what is the what is the next symbol that is semicolon so what is the use of semicolon means after putting one property and value means one declaration the whole thing is called as a declaration after one declaration you have to put semicolon then you can add multiple property value combination okay like in see in second example that is we, here i am using h1 what is h1 h1 is working here as a selector but in css but in html h1 is a tag that is the first heading okay again we have opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket this is a syntax of css if you are going to apply external css or internal css you have to mention in that way that is mean opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket inside that we have to put different declaration or different pad value means that is property and values we have to put the first see color is a property like we have seen inside p tag and what is blue blue is a value so after that you have to put semicolon then if you are going to apply more at more property 
like if you want to apply more for example we have for example you have learned in a standard 11 or standard 12 body tag so if you want to assign background color in html so you will directly write background equal to red now again you want to apply some text color to your to your page again you will give one more one more space and write text equal to red whatever so here you are using two attribute one is background and one is one is text but both the attribute are belongs to body tag in the same way you can add multiple properties and multiple multiple values to a particular selector that is h1 or any selector but the thing is that you have to separate with two properties or two declar two declaration with semicolon again if i want to add one more property i will add again i will end with the semicolon so end of the any declaration we have to put semicolon okay again the first the first thing is completed i put semicolon then i am going to add one more property and value combination or declaration so font size okay the font size is the font size is a property and what is the value 12 pixel then semicolon means this is a declaration after this declaration i have put it one semicolon after this declaration i have put it this semicolon so the thing to remember the, the first thing is called as a css selector and the attribute is considered as a property and the value is same but properties and value are separated by using colon symbol and at the end of the declaration we have to put semicolon so we can have more than one more than one declaration on the basis of how css has given their properties and values means like in html how the number of attributes we have we can use in the same way we have fixed attribute given fixed properties and value combination given by the css language so we can use multiple css declaration to a particular selector but we have to separate one declaration with other by using semicolon or in simple way we have to just put at the end of the declaration we have to put semicolon okay in the first example we have only one declaration so when the declaration is end where a declaration is end here because we have property separated by colon red so the first declaration is completed so we have put it semicolon in the same way here we have two declaration the declaration is called as a combination of property and value okay declaration means combination of value why it's called declaration the first thing I have told why it's called selector because we have to choose the particular tag from your HTML tag or anything from because so we have different ways to select. Maybe we can select by using HTML tag, we can select by using HTML attribute means we have some attribute which is used inside the CSS that is a ID and class. We will see what is ID and what is a, what is a class in CSS but we can select html tag by using html tag itself it's called selected sometimes we select that particular tag by using id and class so id and class is also called as a selector in css okay so the thing is that we select something from html tag and we apply some rule so what is mean by declaration here declaration means something we are going to declare some rules okay so the full meaning of this content means if i am going to explain this so the p is a selector means we have selected p tag okay we have selected p tag from from a particular html tag html page and now i am going to declare some rules and regulation or i am going to declare some effect okay i am going to declare some declaration is also called as assignment i am going to assign some properties and value to that particular tag so the first thing is called as a declaration means where i sorry the first thing is called as a selector where i am going to put some something some effect and that 
that thing is called as a declaration why because i am going to declare what color of this paragraph will be okay i am going to declare so that part is called as a declaration means i have declared that the paragraph of the page will be of red color okay so the this thing is declared so this section is called as a declaration section so this section is called as a selection or selector section why because we have selected this thing from your our html page sometime there will be html tag itself sometime we have some alternative of html tag like sometime we use some ids and some class name again we have different ways how to write id how to write class sometime we group it by using different different thing so these are the thing which will be come in future so the for the time being just try to understand css is a one of the simplest language one of the interesting language which is used to convert your your dry html pages into very attractive web pages so time is moving fast fastly means the video is becoming very long the in next video lecture i will show you the use of css live in any any your working website or in any your website or web page you, you will see what is the importance of css i will just remove the css or i will disable the css from the working website and you will notice how css is importance or what are the value of css in today's web designing or web development world i think if you don't use css your website will look like nothing means your the very dry or unattractive website will be if you don't use css so the css have its own important and again it's a very easy if you learn html if you have already learned html in html standard 11 so the css will be very easy it was the first lecture of css in which i have just try to try to tell you that what is css is all about and how css is apply what is called as a selector what is called as a property and what is a call a call as a value but inshallah in next lecture when we will start practically you will get the clear idea about all these thing for time being thank you very much for listening and keep watching stay tuned with this channel many things to come please student it's a very not a good time for education but this is the only source which provides you a, a good thing to learn so stay tuned with channel and keep learning thank you thank you allah peace